um to some two amazing people um noah i remember being at the production um four minutes 12 seconds yes. um at the at the odom colosseum uh where you played nick uh, could yes. you just uh, could you just tell us a little about that 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 production four minutes 12 seconds what was it about um so um it was um it was actually my first professional play that i've done and it was a very good opportunity and it was uh, a play that was talking about um how social media you know has like a, a negative impact on you know the youth and young people and how also that impacts you know their parents and stuff so it was challenging um the ideas of you know how parents think they know their children but then their children are completely different on social media and like it's about a mother's journey to try and find out who her son really is you know the side that he puts on the socials and then the side that he portrays in himself and i played the son's best friend so yeah it was a very good opportunity to you know to make my professional debut on and work on such an amazing project as well that was so relevant and poignant yeah i i'm i'm glad i was i was i was there uh, front row i was trying to make eye contact but yeah we'll, co we'll come to that we'll come to that um and professor jojo um you know i know you're working on uh an amazing project right now could you just tell us a little bit about what you're working on what what's your what's your field of um of, of specialty right um well i'm not yet prof as they said <laughs> They're calling, they're calling it into being as well. Um, I'm in my final year doing my PhD research at the University of Liverpool. Um, closely linked to what Nuno the man's play was. <laughs> my research basically looks at how entrepreneurs use social media to get resources for their businesses. You know, we live in an era now that um, the impact of social media cannot be overemphasized. I mean, we're having church on social media right now. So um, that's what my research looks at. Um, my writing off stage, trying to birth forth this baby <laughs> so that I can move forth um, to the next stage of the things I have to do. Wow. Um, thank you. Thank you, Professor Jojo. Thank you, Nono. The man, I, like I said, tonight is a special night uh, where, you know, uh, you're seeing two professionals, uh, one in the research field, another in the arts. Um, and it's, you know, we're going to be looking at scriptures um, from these two perspectives. Um, right. To, kick, to kick, kick us off tonight, uh, just a bit of a background. Um, our text will be taken from Psalms uh, or Psalm chapter 51, verse 10. Psalm 51, 10. Uh, while we were just a bit of background as well, while we were praying last um, Christmas, uh, the last 12 days of the year, God spoke a word to us um, about the season. And um, it's like, a, uh, you know, like weaving a, a, a thread, you know, he, he spoke in January, February, March, April, May, right through December. And you need to step back and look at the the, the, the things God said to us to yeah, the full picture. Um, but tonight, we're going to focus on creating me a clean heart and how that applies. Uh, it's been, you know, on Monday, the lockdown, um, the, the government started lifting the lockdown. Uh, people started going outside. People started coming out. Um, businesses are opening up. And uh, what we will try to do tonight is to look at um, what God said to us in, uh, and, how, and how relevant it, it is in our time and in our season and how we can apply the word, how we can apply this word um, in, this, in this season, um, if, you do, if, you know, if you can, if you can um, come with me. So it says in the book of um, Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart. I'm reading from the King James translation, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Um, to give you a bit of context as well, if you back up to, if you can just hold that scripture in your mind and back up to um, Genesis chapter number eight, um, Genesis chapter number eight. And if I start reading from verse, um, verse, uh, um, 13 
it says could we could um could the it team bring up uh, a, a different translation so that i can read from the screen if you don't mind um and not just read the king james um translation um if, if you can if you could help me with another translation but while you're doing that i'll just read the king james um to save us uh, time it says in verse 13 and it came to pass in the 600 and first year in the first month the first day of the month um the waters were dried up from off the earth noah and noah removed the covering of the ark so poignant that we have Noah reading about Noah. We have Noah, no, no, the man. Uh, Noah removed the uh, uh, covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God sp spake unto, spoke unto Moses, saying, Go forth of the, of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, of all fowl, of all cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. Praise God. Amen. So we, we see the background to the story the pandemic things have happened. God spoke to us about it. Um, and God told Noah to go into the ark with his family and the animals um, that were selected and they were preserved. You know, the flood came and wiped everything. Businesses have been wiped. You know, um, profits have been wiped. People have died, 125,000 plus people in the United Kingdom, um, over half a million people in, the, in America. And, you know, the numbers are just too scary. And now God is, you know, is lifting the, 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 the is, you know, the water is receding and life is gradually coming back to normal. So my question tonight is, why is it relevant um, for us, you know, seeing these two scriptures, why do we need God to create in us a new heart? and renew the right spirit within us as we are about to come out of the ark into the new world. Um, I don't know who wants to go first. Why is it relevant? You know, why, why should we be looking at it? Why, you know, what is the, what's the essence? Why is God particular about our hearts um, as we um, come out, as we prepare to come out of the ark? Professor Jojo, do you, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll be happy to. Um, I'll start by saying that everything we see in the physical is a manifestation, manifestation of what has already taken place in the spiritual of what we can see. So um, what we see in the visible, it's a reflection of what there is in the invisible. Now, we've been in a pandemic for over one year now. And we all know um, it's a global pandemic Looking using our physical eyes to look at how things have been. But there's always a spiritual angle to it. You know, the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof, day and everyone that dwells therein. So whether we want to acknowledge it or not, God has been working upon the earth, even in the midst of the darkness. You know, when the Bible says that the glory of God covers the earth, even in the midst of darkness, the glory of God covers the earth. It might not look like glory in our physical eyes. You know, you expect, you're expecting to see splendor, you're expecting to see many things. But I believe if we were to step, take a step back as individuals, as um, speaking to believers now as a child of God, even if you're not a child of God, I believe this will minister to your heart. If we were to be honest with ourselves, take a step back, and look at all that has happened in our lives within one year. Many of us be able to say we've changed in a way. God has had access to us in a way that he has never had access to us before. Naturally, there's been a natural selection of things that actually matter in our lives without anyone saying anything. It was as if everything was shaken and naturally things that matter began to emerge to the top. 
now as we're coming out things are no more the same even the physical world is no more the same you know it will there's a saying i can't remember who said it, it's insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result now as believers even the world itself has changed it will be insanity for us to think we'll come back and do things exactly the same and get good results that's just using the physical lens now now when we bring the spiritual um, perspective into play would we'll see that god has been doing a work in us and if we have been listening i'm using the word if because indeed god has been speaking god speaks in marriage of ways to us god speaks to us and god is always speaking but the question is are we listening god has been speaking to us and if we're able to hearken or listen then we'll realize that He's been teaching us things in our hearts as individuals and then corporately as a body. And we need to begin to incorporate those, you know, mindsets. It might be like um, probably your perception, your thinking about, let me use an example to, to drive this home quickly. An example could be before the pandemic, you always believed that you needed to be in a place physically to do a specific form of work. Mm. But post pandemic, you have to. If you're still coming back with that mindset, you're not going to. You're not going to strive. You're not going to do well. Mm. Your a changing of mind would be that. Oh, post pandemic, the sphere, the sp physical aspect is becoming blurred. I don't need to be in a specific organization. I don't need to be there physically to be able to impact my quota as a person. So you can see that is a change of mind because. Mm there's been a change upon the earth i'll just i'll stop there so that no to we can hear wow 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 that is that is that is deep um let's 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 dig dig deeper into that um yeah. uh, no no the man I'm, I'm i'm gonna ask you right um can can we bring up proverbs 24 27 any easy translation any easy translation or NLT, any translation that is, um, there's a translation that says the farmer. Um, the, can the technical team help me, please? Or if you have your Bible, it's a Bible study, Proverbs 24. Read it from a, a, a different translation that's not the King James. Um, is, is anyone behind, can someone behind the scene? Proverbs 24, 27. It says, um, prepare your work outside. Get everything ready. Thank you. He said, do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. Do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. You know, the scripture says, true wisdom is a house built. You, we build things, businesses, um, organizations, we build our families, we build, you know, um, houses, we build projects, um, true wisdom. Bible says true wisdom, you know, houses built. But now here we see God, you know, if you could leave that, that scripture on the screen, it says prepare, prepare your work, plan, prepare your field before you build. Some translation says put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Noah, can you just speak briefly on the place of preparation and planning um, using every day, using your field? You know, I, I came to that production, 12, 4 minutes, 12 seconds. Can you talk to me how you got into character? Because I heard you speak um, a different accent. You, was, you had a, a Bolton accent. Am I right? You had a Bolton accent. Yeah. You... You were a different person. When I saw you there, I was like, oh, wow, is this Noah? You know, I tried to, dis that, I, coming back to, to what I was saying at the beginning, I tried to distract you by making eye contact. You know, I was excited. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. You know, seeing you on that stage, you know, watching you grow into the man you're becoming, I was so excited. And, you know, I was trying to, trying to smile, but you were in character. You know, you, you stayed focused. At, how did how do you how do you prepare your mind as an actor 
to get into character and play a role and bring your role to life in the context. And if you could speak about that and bring it home um, to what we're discussing, which is which Professor Jojo has alluded to, how we prepare our minds to for this new world and this new earth. Yeah. So um, in terms of like from an acting point of view, um, we had a four week uh, rehearsal period and the show only ran for two weeks. So wow. in that sense, um, preparation is always going to be more than the end product. And you wow. have to keep wow. on honing the, the skill. You, you, you practice, you, you want the, pre preparing for four weeks for a two week production. Yeah. Okay, go on. Go on. So um, in that four weeks where we did many different things other than, you know, learn our lines, we did um, different exercises. We had a director, we had a creative movement person come in, even though there was not much, you know, like dance or stuff like that. We did like a dance session just, you know, for us to get into our bodies and for us to be able to be aware of how we move along the stage, you know, even with little movements and looking at the, the details because details are very important, especially if you're on stage. You know, because like, you have to amplify everything so that the audience can see it. So in terms of like preparation, we did that day in and day out for four weeks and then we did the run. But even like backstage behind the run, for example, like I was in the play, I was at the very beginning and at the very end. So I had like a an hour and a half to myself in my dressing room and I couldn't just like shut off during the hour and a half. I had to stay on top of my game, you know, I had to you know, do ex exercises to keep my body warm, to keep my voice prepared, you know, maybe, I don't know, I have a snack or anything, to, to, something to keep my energy going. So preparation is key and you have to, you can't go into these things, you know, blindsided, obviously. And like this verse says, is do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. So do all of that work and all that hard work in private before you put everything out for show. And yeah, that's basically how, you know, it ties in with the whole acting thing. Okay, and 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 it's been it's been twelve months. How have you been preparing? You know, looking at this scripture, how have you been? How, how has God been dealing with you in the private and in, in the secret place as you prepare for this new world? You know, again, the awards, um, how awards are presented, Oscars have changed. People are receiving, you know, no more cat, you know, the, the red carpet, people are doing it from home. You know, acting has, has changed, your industry has changed. How has God been preparing you or dealing with you um, as you prepare and plan for life after, after the lockdown? Um, yeah, a big thing for me was actually when the whole lockdown was announced, like a year and a bit ago, I was like, wow, what am I going to do now? Because I just like, four minutes, 12 seconds had just ended like a week before lockdown. Like we, we, I remember we were discussing it in one of the rehearsals saying that, oh, this coronavirus thing is probably not going to be anything serious and then <laughs> like, yeah, a year later. So yeah, immediately after um, four minutes, 12 seconds, I also got an acting agent. So everything was looking up for me. And then Boris shuts down the country essentially. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there in my pajamas on day one of lockdown and I'm like, God, help me what do i do because mm. i felt like everything has just started and you know in terms of like my creative aspect because you know the, the 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 thing for actors is you know having a job as well as your acting to you know to help you fund that but then i couldn't get a job because everything was locked down so i i, I asked god like what can i do and then i remember um having a discussion with my classmates about tiktok before like everything shut down we were talking about it and then we all all of us we because you know we all think that we're all old and you know we're all, we're all <laughs> no what no what no what stop playing stop playing you, no, if, no, you're no, thinking, no, like, if you're thinking you're old if you're thinking you're old what do you want some people on this on this on this on this uh Bible study to do. Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, go all on. in the sense of like, we, we all viewed TikTok as a kid's app, quote and unquote, as like mm. the app that, you know, all the the 12 and 13 year olds do and do all their funny dances or whatever. And then we all used to look down on it and make fun of it. Like, oh, and then I was like, you know what? Let me do this TikTok thing. You know, let me, and I prayed about it and I felt God leading me to, you know, do it. And then like in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, sure, why not? So then I did that. 
I applied my, you know, degree, my <laughs> qualifications to help me, you know, my acting degree to help me push my content and make my content stand out from people. And then by God's grace, I'm, I'm in a position now where like I'm earning good money from making TikTok clips for children, for kids, you know, people who are, you know, enjoy my content and stuff like that. And yeah, I think for me, a big thing was like humility as well because I did see myself as this big, you know, actor. Like I just, you know, made my professional debut. I had, uh, you know, I had um, people come and watch my show and write criticisms of me and like um, produce like um, all these stuff about me and whatever, like reviews and stuff. And my name was mentioned online in big publications and one big actor like me with an acting agent is gonna go and do TikTok, nah. So I think that was a big thing for me, humility. And also, um, a Bible verse that I remember, my parents always tell me this Bible verse, a man's gift makes room for him, Proverbs 16, 18. And um, that's my favorite Bible verse in the sense of the fact that it's proven to be true because I look back on the things that I've achieved in, over this past year through TikTok and I'm like, it can only be God. Hmm. Like, it can only be God because how can I, you know, go from making a 10 second video um, I'm putting it online to me being, you know, pushed and represented and like doing videos for major sporting companies around the world. It doesn't make sense in my head. So it can only be God. So, yeah, that was a big. Yeah, you, you, you yeah. said something, Noah. Um, for those watching online, please start sending your questions. You said something. You said humility. Humility. So the, 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 what God had to recreate in you, the new mind uh, uh, he had to create in you was bringing yourself down and saying yeah i'm there I've, I've achieved that but you know what i can also come down and and try this not yeah. being afraid to try something that was alien to you it was like you said you laughed about it but you you humbled yourself so if you're watching um that it's that is powerful you might be doing something different and god is just laying something in your heart, something you've overlooked, something that looks mundane, something that doesn't make sense. But God has used it, and you know, uh, without without you know, not 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 saying anything that's not real. Noah has close to. Am I right in saying close to half a million views? Um, views or followers? Followers, sorry. Uh, followers, I have 170,000 followers. 170,000 followers. You know, this is what we God has been talking to us. Um, I'm go I'll share something with us about doing something for God. You know, I was having a chat with uh, Professor Jojo. Maybe, Professor Jojo, you could, you could say something about it, about us needing a, mind, a mindset shift from going to church to be in the church mm. from going to church to be in the church and being the church is about like noah said using your gift using your skill noah has a hundred and some something thousand followers if i'm correct and he's not there preaching to them you know ramming the bible but his character people just go like oh wow you know maybe I'll, I'll speak to you about it later noah people are really reaching out people who are thinking of committing suicide you know watch his videos and say to him why wow, your videos lifted me why because he has the content of the spirit of god and god is reaching people in any way shape and form he wants so thank you for that just use your gift use your gift thank you uh no no the man professor jojo can you speak very briefly about being the church and going to church. Noah came out of the ark with his family. And what God said to him is go and be fruitful, go and multiply, go and go and replenish the earth. He didn't just say to him, go and go to church. Mm -hmm. Because I feel sometimes we use the church as an excuse to hide on that. You know what? Uh, pastor is going to be the one preaching. So let me just go and hide there. Or oh, the choir is just singing. So let me just go and hide there. You know what? I'm an usher. I'm an usher. So let me just go and usher. That is not your calling. That is not what, th there's so much more to you than just being an usher. 
So Juju, can you just speak briefly about a mindset shift from just going to church to us being the church? Um, I'll just say that quickly. Jesus did not save us to remain in church. <laughs> he saved us to go there for, in fact, the Great Commission, go there for, we're, even, so we're not supposed to stay and then the people to come to us were to go go therefore and make disciples of all nations and the bible also says that when jesus was ascended unto high he gave gifts to men so as everybody on earth has something to give everybody on earth has something to give and um we need to come to a place as an individual there comes a time in your life as an individual that you have to come to a place where you say to yourself, you know what, this is what I think I have. It's either I use it or I don't. <laughs> and you know, you just go use all your put all your eggs in God's basket. Just go. You might not know what the result is going to be, but you just go. Because as we begin to go out into the world, being the church where, where the hands and feet of Jesus, where the eyes of Jesus, people begin to see how different we are. You know, when the Bible says, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and give glory to God in heaven. So our job is to allow our light shine. And people see that and they're like, yeah, they give glory to God in heaven. Mm. And the Bible also says that we are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a candle shell, but they put it on a stand that it may give light to all that are in the world. So in our world where there is darkness, instead of complaining, Jesus is saying to us, let there be light. Let there be Jojo, let there be Noah, let there be Pastor K, because we are the light of the world. And when the light shines in the darkness, the darkness cannot comprehend it. It just goes. And I just feel some of the prayer points we pray, if we could just shine, the darkness would just go naturally. If we could just shine, the darkness will go naturally. Instead of praying and rebuking the darkness and asking the darkness to go away. Mm. Well, that, 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 that's my right, deep. Um, uh, 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 you know, when, the, when God spoke to us about the heart and the fact that we, are, we have talent and we have gifts and we're just hiding, and I, I think sometimes we use um, this form of spirituality as an excuse for laziness, our laziness. Mm. You know, you go like, oh, I'm waiting for God to speak to me to do something. Noah said something. He said he just prayed. And... When he prayed, he said, Lord, what do I do in the pandemic? What do I do now? And it's important for us to realize that most times where, where, where we pray is usually not where God answers. He mm -hmm. prayed that prayer, went and was having a conversation with his classmates and TikTok came up and he said, let me give it a go. You know, if we understand that, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, are the, they are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. Mm. Let's stop making this excuse that, oh, I'm just sitting down waiting for God. No, it is in our going out. It's in your doing what you're doing mm. that God orders your steps. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, you know, I saw something that, that blew my mind, you know, have you ever read the scripture where the Bible says, and Jesus walked as it was written concerning him? Mm. Everything Jesus was doing was already pre-written. Pre and he was already prepared. And he was just walking as he was walking. He was fulfilling that which was said about him. If you don't step out and begin to give things a go, I'll, I'll give an example. So one of the things I said to, I wanted to do with God and for God this year was to be more relevant in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how that would be at, you know, at, I didn't know. All of a sudden, you know, I, I was speaking to people about properties and how you could, you know, build generational wealth through property. And I, I was reading the scriptures and I found out that 
God was always talking about land. I was talking about, you know, land. And I started just, you know, studying, looking at it. And before you knew it, I started getting invitations to come and speak, uh, you know, speak to people about property, speak, you know, share what I know. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy answering questions about property, about business, about strategy. And, you know, doors have opened up for me. You know, I'm speaking, I've been invited, you know, to, you know, to Bristol, to Oxfordshire, you know, to, to Lagos, Nigeria, to just share my story. And that was what I said. I, I didn't know exactly how it was going to be, but I just said, I want to be more relevant in the marketplace. And, you know, the testimonies about, like Professor Jojo said, you know, our, us just shining and, you know, men seeing our light and glorifying God. You know, you said something about go. You know, go into the world and make disciples. That was the same thing God said to Noah. It mm -hmm. would shock you. If you look at that scripture, God said to Noah, go out of the ark. Go out and do, be fruitful. So it's, God is, don't say I'm waiting for God to speak to me. No, God has already spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Go and, you know, go and use your skill. Don't be afraid of failing. Don't be afraid yeah. that you fail doesn't make you a failure. Mm -hmm. go out go on failed go on go and try give it a go and in so doing we would begin to see god manifest and do awesome things um thank you so much thank you so much um could we can we just go to the questions um questions thank you so much thank you so much um the first question what is the place of personal responsibility in situations we see in the physical in the context of the visible being a reflection of the invisible. Mm. That's a that's that's quite long. Professor Jojo, do you want to give that one a go? Um, I'll the try. Responsibility in situations we've seen the fiscal, the context of the visible being a reflection of the invisible. Um, I'll try to answer it. The question is not exactly clear, but I'll try to. Um, I'll give an example. The example you just gave about uh, you had a desire in your heart. You wanted to be more relevant in the marketplace and you prayed, one. Number two, you began to search scriptures to see where the Bible spoke about land. Mm. Now, that was... Um, that was not visible. It's not when you were invited to speak that you started to prepare. You didn't prepare on the stage. You prepared in the invisible, per se. I mean, no one was there when you were preparing, studying those scriptures about land, praying and talking to God. I want to be more relevant. And then there was a physical manifestation of all that had happened in the invisible. And that physical manifestation looks like getting invites. You know, your gift began to make room for you. Now, when it comes into the context of probably, and um, um, the question might be um, what I said earlier about whatever we see in the physical is only a reflection of what there is. Now, it could be that scripturally, we all know we're in the end times. We don't know. Jesus is coming back soon. I don't know if it's going to be my generation, but it's soon. It's sooner than it was years ago. So that could be a reflection of what there is in the invisible. Things are shaking up. You can't, we can't afford to be lukewarm believers anymore. Things are shaking up. Things are wrapping up. You know, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord has to be certain. Now, those are invisible things that are happening. And the physical might be, oh, there's a pandemic. People are more edgy. People are just angry. Now, those are reflections in the physical, but there is a bigger dimension. These are just the fruits that people can see. I don't know if... Um... Yeah, if, if I can also answer, I'll use two scriptures to answer that question. Um, the first scripture I gave us was, uh, one of the scriptures I gave us tonight is Proverbs 24, 27. It says, um, prepare, plan, and prepare your field before building your house. If I bring it, if I use agriculture, you prepare the, 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 the garden, the land, you, you, you know, till the ground, you, you, you water the ground, you weed it, and you plant. That is your responsibility. Mm. Your personal responsibility is to plan. Plan it so you have no control over which seed will grow. Yeah. 
-hmm. That is God's responsibility. That is God's prerogative. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow. Jojo mm -hmm. shared this with me yesterday. It blew me away. If you keep looking at the weather, you will not sow. You will not do anything. And the mistake we make is that we fail to understand that weather, like she explained it to me, uh, credit to Jojo, I'm referencing her. <laughs> the, 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 the weather is short term. The season is long term. So if you keep checking out, oh, I'm waiting for when the economy will be great for me to invest and buy shares and stocks, you will never buy it. If you're waiting for the right time for when the house prices will come down, you'll never buy a house. If you're waiting for when the the jobs are so easy, you know, that you know it's going to be an easy application, you will never apply for any job. You know, if you're wait, waiting for everything to be perfect, you would you would not be able to do anything. And let's remember the Bible says in Proverbs 19:21, there are many plans in a man's heart, but God's purpose will prevail. It's not my job to make anything happen. My job is to do my bit mm. and then allow God. You know, Bible said Paul planted Apollos water. Increase lies with God. Mm. But you can sit at home and say, the Bible said the lazy man says there's a lion in the way. I'm not going to go out. I might be eaten, making excuses. So, you know, I hope that answers that question in the place mm -hmm. of personal responsibility. We have a responsibility to prepare, to go out into the uh, out of the ark and then, you know, plant and then leave the rest for God. Amen. 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 Next question. Do we have another question? We make plans, but God determines the step. Can you pl please explain the scriptures? Do we make every plan but it's up to God to direct. Yes, I think I've answered it. Um, continue. Uh, or we make plans with God, and He shows us how to go about the plans. It, it, both of them are right. But uh, let's remember, we are spiritual people. We are that as many as are led by this. We have the Spirit of God. Hmm. We have the Spirit of God. Remember when Moses, Bible say, he came to his heart to go and visit the people. He thought the people would understand that he would he was a deliverer. He was in his heart, but he, he wasn't fully formed. And he tried to do it his way, and he failed. But he didn't kill the, the what God had planned for him. God had to take him back, teach him, and then bring him back, and he fulfilled it with God. So every plan we're making, let's get God involved. You know, we're spiritual people. Noah said he prayed. You know, mm -hmm. he prayed. But what the preparation does is, like Noah said, it just helps you stay alert. You know, David planned to build a temple. He prepared for it, but it was his son who ended up building it because God wanted his son to build it. But he still prepared because we need to understand that working with God is generational. Yeah. There are certain things you do today that your children will pick up and will fulfill. That is why if you look at the scriptures, everything was preparation for the time of Christ. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus Christ. And you find that it was the people who were came into the baptism of John that found it, that it was easy for them to receive Jesus. You see mm -hmm. that in the book of Luke. So yes, we plan, don't make your plan without God. You know, and don't just wait for the right season, just keep walking and, you know, um, you see God manifest himself in and through us. I hope that answers the question. Mm. Do we have any other question? Or is that the last one? Um, let me have a look. No. Okay, oh. we don't have any other question. Um, wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, it's been it's been great. Um any final words, Noah? Do you have any any final words before we leave on 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 you know preparing to step out of the ark and step into the new opportunities that God has for us post pandemic? Um, for me, I just say be open for for anything because that's one thing I've learned: the opportunities and um, opportunities and challenges come from anywhere. So um, just stay prayerful 
and just be bold to like step and embrace into like different opportunities that's one thing that i've learned because there are many things that i've done that have been you know quote unquote uncomfortable for me to do but i've done them um with god's help and i think that a lot of that is going to happen in this new world that we're going into uh like jojo was saying before things are going to be very different to way to the way they were before we entered into this lockdown so yeah just be prepared to face new challenges and um yeah it's it's it's, it's going to be a good journey i can i can feel that thank you thank you noah prof jojo any final words um let's be bold again don't be afraid just take the step it's okay not to get it right the first time mm. god mm. is a good father and i like to give the analogy of a child if i have a child today and my child is trying to crawl or to walk and the child falls i'm not going to scold the child i'm going to celebrate i'm going to be like well done get up and do it again so let's not be afraid to fail god is not scolding us he's instead we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses cheering us on. If you lay hand on someone to pray for them and they don't get healed today, it's okay. Do it again next time. God mm. is not holding us. And um, we should remember that growth purpose is a journey. It's not a destination. Mm. So I am constantly growing. This is the worst version of Josephine you will ever see because I'm going to be better the next time you see me. So let's have that mindset that we are evolving, we're changing, we're becoming the better versions of ourselves within the days that God gives us on earth. We don't have forever to do the will of God. So let's start doing something. Wow. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, Noah. Um, you know, your story, um, four minutes 12 seconds i wish it was on 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 still on you know i'll ask everyone to go and watch it you know your story's been in, in, inspiring mm. you know you kept practicing rehearsing for four weeks for a two-week production um, mm. the, the preparation you know is usually more than the than the than the dove manifestation but you know you were you know i'm a big fan um please let's put noah's handle TikTok handle um you know let's put it can can we put noah's tiktok handle please let's follow him um let's encourage him um you know the young kids you know the 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 arrows i call them the arrow wood you know the, <laughs> those those kids are you know Noah. what's your handle let's put your handle tell us your handle uh so it's nuno the man on all social medias yeah. no no the man on all social medias please let's put the TikTok. you know the the young people are watching you know um parents also learning to give encourage your children you know give them an opportunity to try things you know mm -hmm. let them try things let them discover themselves when they ask questions don't shut them down you know they're being curious they're, they're learning and you know we introduce the spirit of fear in them and you know kills that drive to try something new to try mm -hmm. something and it's okay to fail you know let me repeat that it's okay to fail but don't just stop there get up and try again the bible said the righteous man falls seven times he picks himself up and he goes again i've never seen anybody who never you we read through the scriptures abraham failed you know moses failed you know every, most people you see in scripture they fail peter failed you know, Thomas doubted Jesus, but you know, why then do we write people off when they when they when they fall down? Why do we write people off? And why are we afraid not to try things? You lay hands on somebody that don't get healed, try again. You pray for someone they don't get healed, pray again. You know, you try, you apply, they reject you, go again. You know, you are not a failure. You know, and thank you so very much, Noah, for sharing that. Jojo, Professor Jojo, thank you for sharing your story. Um, and we thank God for the pandemic. We thank God for the new opportunities that are opening up. And God is creating us in us a new mindset, a new heart, a new heart. And as you know, as we step out, you know, God is going to God is going to do all some things. Thank you so much. A wonderful guest please can we Thank show them some love can, you, can we show them some love please on on, okay. on facebook live can you just 
you know, hail them. Like I said, Jojo is not married. Uh, if you want to drop a DM, drop a DM on the judge platform. We'll respond. Um, oh my goodness. New opportunities. Don't be afraid. You see, that's the thing. If you don't ask, you you might never know. You might never know. So just ask, you know, ask. Um, no, no, the man. Oh thank goodness. you so much. Uh, God bless you too. Um, been amazing. Thank you, everyone. And let's just share a word of prayer as we hand over. Um, Father, we thank you. We give you praise for your word. We must step out of the ark with a new heart, a, a new and clean heart into the new earth. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you begin tonight. I know you've already started to transform our minds, to renew our minds, to heal our minds, oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for the blood of Jesus that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel is speaking on our behalf right now. And Father, thank you for the healing. Thank you for everyone who's failed. Father, we thank you for your forgiveness is available. Thank you, O oh God, for though there be a casting down, we say there's a lifting up. And Father, we Amen. thank you. We thank you and we seize this opportunity as a church, as a family, as individuals. Father, we march forward and the gates of hell will not prevail. Thank you, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. And amen. amen.